Okay, so the second demo is targeted for DevOps. Uh, so previously we have seen how we can automate uh, relatively complex tasks uh, through Ansible in multiple environments, uh, being it ACI, vSphere, and uh, KVM. And we can include anything and then how to install actually application packages into the operating system and uh, the idea behind the deployment of actual application. Uh, so in the context of DevOps, you know, one thing uh, which uh, people throughout the software development uh, do over and over is uh, build up of new versions of the application as they write a new code or change the code, include the functionalities, do fixes or whatever. Uh, and uh, in order to do that, they use a couple of uh, systems uh, generally uh, today, uh, but in the actual testing, then uh, they have an issue, and I'll come back to that in a moment. So uh, today, how the pipeline of uh, software development works is that when you do any sort of code change, uh, introduce a new functionality, fix something, or uh, add a new module, or whatever, uh, the common practice is that the uh, source code for that application is stored in a, in a source code uh, management repository. Uh, the most frequently used today is a Git, being it the uh, web version of GitHub or public service uh, or some other, but Git is uh, again open source and freely available and basically everybody uses it. Uh, so you do a change, uh, you uh, submit it uh, into the code management system. So in code management system, you have all of the revision of particle source code file, uh, and you can specify the versionings and uh, builds uh, from which the file subject should consist and so on and so on. So that's what people normally do. Uh, then they use frequently some kind of build environment. Uh, frequently Jenkins, but again, there are others. Uh, some uh, some web-based or on, on public cloud, some uh, on the private uh, environment. Jenkins is one of the most frequently used, so we will use it throughout the demo as well. So Jenkins usually watches the kit, and once there is a new version, uh, it pulls the latest uh, versions of the source code, does the build, and then runs something what we call uh, what we call unit testing. So good programmers today, good developers uh, today, provide also a uh, test suite in the code automatically uh, that is executed uh, after each build. So it checks uh, whether the expected uh, result of certain modules based on the previously known input corresponds to our expectations, and if it violates, it reports it. So this is targeted uh, to uh, eliminating the errors uh, implied into the code uh, throughout the development and the things which already have been working before. Uh, so if we break something, we can detect it uh, really quickly. But if we have more complex application consisting from multiple layers or services, we need to be able to test it in full. Uh, and this is uh, the goal of so-called integration tests. So we check that the integration between the layers of the application uh, actually works. And to be able to do that, we need to build the application in all of the layers. Uh, and that's no longer that simple as to build uh, the one code base or one application or one binary from one code base. I need, we need to actually build it up and then create the application environment uh, in terms of virtual machine on containers and then to uh, deploy the application on all of those uh, entities, virtual machines or in containers again and uh, possibly preload some testing data and then run the integration tests. And this is complex because the uh, environment buildup is uh, hand usually handled by hand by operations department, and that, that takes ages. So while you can very quickly develop code, the testing actually slows the development down uh, because then we uh, run the integration tests uh, like uh, one in two weeks or so, uh, and, in and then we find out that we broke something, so we will fix it after two weeks instead of having it fixed immediately. So there is a great value in 
building up uh, the testing environment automatically over and over without the human interven intervention. And that's what we will show in this in this uh, DevOps-based test. So again, we start with the empty uh, empty environment, pre-configured ACI, uh, basic stuff in DD Center and KVM, the same application as we have seen for the operations. But on the Ansible server, we have also installed Jenkins. Uh, as a build server and we will build the same environment as, as before and again through the pre-installed application packages we will show how to do the application deployment through Jenkins. So let's go to Jenkins, let's log in um, and in Jenkins uh, <coughs> we specify uh, so-called uh, build items uh, or tasks which uh, Jenkins shall run as part of the uh, application build. So we are using uh, here two, one for cleanup, one for build up. So this is the build up and just to show how it works. Uh, we are uh, using the standard Ansible uh, task uh, for Jenkins. Uh, and the task basically lets you give it some name, some description, blah, blah, blah. Say which source code management to watch. In this case, we are not doing the automated build. We will run it from hand. But if you say uh, it should watch a git and some kind of project, it will watch. And uh, once the content of the uh, source code repository changes, it will automatically pick up the latest version and do the build. Subversion is a different uh, product for source code management. Build triggers is uh, monitor automatically, build periodically. Uh, for SCM, that's the automatic build or uh, hook trigger that it's actively being told by the Git that there was some kind of change. Uh, not important build environment at this moment, but for Ansible there is a specific step like this and it, uh, it allows us to specify the playbook file, the inventory file, or even create the inline inventory file, meaning that we can pass those parameters from the uh, Jenkins configuration. It depends which method is more convenient for you, both are the same. And if we have the specification, we can go to the item and simply click build. And now we only enjoy watching as the build is running. So we can monitor actually the output of uh, the build-up. This is what we have seen already before. Uh, so it will go through the full build uh, until everything is uh, being done. So I'll shut up for the moment. So again, we have the APIC environment build up. Here is again this Martin T 
turn on this other thing. And there is the phone virtualization VM2 machine with IP address being assigned from the DHCP and also the VM1 on the VMware side signed IP address from the DHCP or not yet actually so I'm going to need to wait a little while and let them drink in so you can nicely monitor the course of the action So now we have the two new virtual machines built and the various addresses and we will install Java so it will take another few minutes. So finished with success and we have the whole environment again up and running and uh, because we are nice guys we will also run the cleanup so next time we start to have a fresh build and again if you are interested the output here you can do with the Virtual machines, KVM, now VMware, and ACI and the Adam. So that concludes our DevOps based demo.